Hey, what's up? It's Paul with Kali Center out here doing some hiking, some training, filming some videos for a new Kali program that I'm putting together. And I'm doing a little bit of reflecting right now and some pondering. Um, this month, June, this is my Kali anniversary month. 25 years ago when I was 15, I uh, was first introduced to Filipino martial arts. This is when my training began. And uh, it's been a wild, wild journey ever since then. And, uh, you know, back when I was 15 years old, I could not imagine what this would turn into, you know, especially nowadays. It's crazy because, uh, you know, here on the YouTube channel, we're uh, approaching 200,000 subscribers. We're getting closer to it every single day. And that is just unbelievable to me, right? It's just, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, I want to real quick just kind of take a moment and thank everybody who subscribed to the channel and been hanging out with me all these years on this crazy journey, who's come out and trained with me in person at my events, who's, uh, you know, joined in my courses, my online school, you know, and just supported Kali Center, you know, over the last uh, 10 years. It's going to be 10 years of Kali Center uh, this fall. Amazing. Super, super blessed. Super thankful for, for all of you guys. Um, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about out here is, is, uh, you know, what's the difference between the people who, you know, they pick up training, you know, maybe they become pretty good at it versus the people who become really, really good. Like they become great. They become, you know, what I would, kind of say advanced practitioners of Kali you know what's that thing what's that line in the sand that causes these differences um, and as a practitioner and as a teacher you know I've been teaching now for I've been teaching since I was like 22 23 so was that 17 I don't know over 15 years that I've been teaching um, I've definitely noticed that there's, there's a definitive thing going on that has people, you know, in these two different, uh, reaches of skill, right? You know, some people, they come into Kali and I guess this is true for any, any martial art or really any skill. So you can just replace the word Kali with any other martial art that you want to, or any other skill that you want to, but in the world of Kali, right? Some people come into this art with a very um, surface layer intention. You know, they just want to learn some fighting abilities, learn some self-defense skills. And, you know, as a practitioner of this art, someone who's dedicated time to this art, that's a very surface layered intention to come into this art because fighting is the nature of the beast, right? Like you, if you are training in this art, you are automatically going to get fighting skills and self-defense skills. That's surface layer. Um, but the people who really become advanced, who, bec who end up acquiring great skills, you know, the people that students of mine that come to mind are like people like Tom, Ollie, John. Like these guys are really, really, I mean, they are physically good at this art. But they also have a deeper knowledge and understanding of this art, of what they're doing, the principles that are applied, the methods, the, the system of it, right? Um, you know, system, this is, you know, what defines this as a system is that this is a process of logic. And, and they really understand this process and, and the development of this process, what it takes, and having that deeper level of intention, this is what drives people to cross that threshold from, you know, getting good to becoming one of the greats, you know, becoming a truly advanced practitioner. Um, you know, they can end up acquiring skills and pulling things off and sparring and all that, that, uh, you know, sometimes as a beginner or even sometimes as, as an advanced practitioner, you, sometimes I'll see Tom pull something off or John or sometimes I'll even surprise myself. I'm like, dang, dude, that was good. You know, because like in, in any martial art, 
you know, I think all martial arts kind of go through this, right? Like the higher you go up in rank, the higher you go up in skill, the less people there is to train with, right? Uh, it's like you go into a school and there's like a hundred white belts, but there's like maybe, you know, five to 10 black belts, like high level practitioners, right? Um, and it's just the nature of the beast, you know, like a lot of people come in with a surface layer of, you know, intention of why they want to train. Um, you know, maybe it's to learn some fighting skills. Maybe it's learn some self-defense skills. Uh, maybe it's just a, a New Year's um, resolution to lose some weight, you know, and maybe they drop a couple pounds. They're happy. They learn some self-defense skills. At least, you know, they think they did. They're happy, good enough, and then they leave. You know, maybe they train for a couple of weeks, six months to a year, and then you never see them again. But the people that stick it out, I find, they just have this deeper intention, you know? And sometimes they may not even know what that deep intention is right away. It might take years of reflection. I know I didn't. You know, it took me years of reflecting to really find, you know, what my what was my drive? You know, a lot of people over the years have asked me, Paul, what motivates you to keep training? What's your motivation? And I kind of have this um, kind of blow off answer of like, well, dude, I don't have motivation, dude. It's just drive, which wasn't a blow off answer. It is, it is what it is. Like, I don't really have something, you know, external that motivates me daily to get up and practice the basic footwork and the basic strikes and you know the super super beginner stuff right over the years i've learned that it's the fundamentals it is the beginner information that is the true advanced information actually you know the advanced stuff you know the advanced like florettis and matiques and all that manipulation stuff that's more like the intermediate level skill um you know, but you realize that as you're becoming more advanced because your your level of understanding becomes deeper and deeper. Um, but, you know, it was drive. It, it was drive. And, you know, I just had experiences in my life and reflecting on experiences that opened up, you know, what what is that deeper intention that keeps me going with it? You know, and that intention, it changes, right? It evolves over time and it's definitely different nowadays. I don't have that same feeling you know, back when I was 15 to 20 training that I have now, um, you know, but um, I definitely over the years, over the decades have observed that, you know, surface layer intentions for your training will get you surface layer results. Deep intentions for training will eventually serve you and provide you with deeper results. And um, you know, it really just comes down, boils down to what do you want? You know, what do you want from Kali? You know, what do you what do you want from from this life? What do you want from this experience, from this adventure? You know, maybe Kali, I think I think most people are searching some layer of deepness in their life. You know, maybe Kali is the medium for you to do that. Maybe Kali is not the medium for you to do that. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's a different martial art. Maybe it's a different activity altogether. Um, you know, maybe some people are just exploring Kali because they're exploring that, uh, you know, that medium to see if it's right for them or, or, or if it's not, you know. Um, you know, but I think that's, that's the big thing that really separates the, uh, the difference between those who really make it into a level of greatness and those who, who end up staying you know, at a level of what I would kind of consider good enough. I don't want that to sound insulting. It's not insulting, right? It's you know, the level that this person wants to take it. You know, and, and good enough can be really good. It can be really, really good. You know, and, and just to know that you know, intentions can change. And I've seen this happen in students, um, you know, over the years of teaching. Now, teaching has done immense wonders 
for me, not only as, as you know, in my skill as a collie practitioner, but I think just in growth as a human being, because I got to observe a lot of different people. I've got to have good conversations with a lot of people, a lot of shallow conversations, um, but a lot of deep, meaningful conversations as well. And sometimes with people that I, I, you know, judging a book by its cover, I know we shouldn't do it, but it's nature. We do it. Um, but you know, it's like, dang, I never, I never would have guessed that, you know, just by judging this person by the cover that I would have had this crazy deep conversation and experience with. Right. And that's where, even though, you know, the, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with judging a book by its cover, right? Like it's natural to do this, right? It's part of our survival mode. It's built in there. But while you're doing that, have an open mind to possibilities of growth here, right? Like, even though I'm looking at this person, I'm like, you know, this is the level of potential that I kind of see in this person. But give the person a chance. You know, I have found over time, I have been surprised by people that I'm like, yeah, you know, they'll probably stick around for, you know, maybe a couple weeks or something. 90% of the time, I am right. But, 10% of the time, I'm wrong. And that person ends up becoming one of one of my best students. You know, I mean, Tom, Tom was, is a perfect example of that. You know, when I first met Tom, you know, I almost kind of had him, you know, sign up to train with me, you know, through with blood, right? It's kind of like a blood agreement. <laughs> you know, you're going to sign this with your, you know, we're going to prick your finger and you're going to write your name with blood kind of kind of thing you know he was young I was young I wanted to train I was looking for a training partner he couldn't afford to uh you know to pay anything at that time so I'm like that's it man you're gonna you're gonna train with me you're gonna sign right here sign away your soul almost kind of like type type of thing you know just having fun here guys just joking around here but it, it was kind of you know like like that thing um you know, but at that time, in the very beginning, I was like, you know, this guy's going to train maybe for a couple of months, just like everybody else, and, and they're going to quit. You know, he's going to get to that point where, like, he's just starting to get good enough to where it's like, okay, dude, now we can really kick into things. Because I would say probably 90% of the people that I have trained with and that I have taught over the years, you know, they, they get to that point, man. They get, like, right there. It's like, now we can really get your training going. And then they disappear. But Tom, you know, what is it? 15 years later, that dude is still rocking and rolling. And, uh, and he's absolutely become one of the greats. One of the best practitioners I have known. One of the best training partners I have ever experienced. You know, and people like Ollie and John, they're right there. You know, they're, they're, they possess that same thing. You know, talking with Tom, I'm not going to get personal on Tom's side or, or even talking with Ollie or John or any of these guys. You know, I don't want to talk about personally their experiences and stuff. That's not my place. But through deep conversations with them and other students that have reached these advanced levels, you know, as we're in conversation, we've all experienced this deeper intent this deeper intention for training. You know, it was no longer about fighting or self-defense or just fitness and exercise. It kind of goes down into the soul. It goes really, really deep. Um, and it didn't start off that way for everybody that become advanced. You know, I didn't think it did for me. Uh, but it can evolve to that, right? Intentions evolve. So that's just something to kind of think about. You know, I'm kind of just rambling on. I don't want to make this video too crazy long. Um, but maybe maybe that's something that you've experienced. You know, if you're kind of maybe going through a, a plateau time in your training where you have this deep intention, but you're like kind of feeling like your training is stagnant. And you're like, man, I'm kind of losing motivation. Like, I want to do it. Like, I have this drive, but like, it's just... You know, I'm having a hard time pulling through. Um, look, we all go through that. You know, I've gone through that. Tom's gone through that. We've all gone through those times, even though we have that deep drive, that deep intention for it. You know, we have that moment, that period of time. Maybe it's like a one year, two year 
where it's just like we're feeling kind of stagnant. Like our skill is kind of growing, but it's kind of not. It's not going as fast as we'd like it to go. Stick with it. Hold on to that deep intention. Um, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of come out to a seminar, come out to an event, go out to an event, go train with somebody, go train with somebody new, you know, get in touch with somebody. You know, sometimes that just helps to change up the location, change up the environment. You know, maybe that environment is just kind of running stagnant and you got to change the people that you're around to uh, kind of re-spark up that, that deep intention, you know. Um, but that's the big, that's the big divide it is that level of intention. Surface level intention, look, surf, surface reasoning is going to get you surface level results. Deep reasoning is going to get you deep results. Um, let me know, know down in the comments, you know, are you, have you experienced this in your own Kali practice or maybe in something else that you practice? Have you experienced this kind of deeper intention that just kind of pulls you into this practice, almost kind of pulls your soul to the practice? You know, whether that's Kali, maybe a different style of martial arts or just something, a different practice all in general, you know, love to kind of dive a little bit into your you know, experience of that. Um, but that's it. That's the video. That's all I got for you. You know, if you like this video, um, if you enjoy what we're doing here at Kali Center and support Kali Center, be sure to hit the thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. Check out my uh, training courses, the online school. We do offer one-on-one um, -on -one coaching through our online school, we do have that service available. So if you're looking to kind of have more of a tailored approach, you got specific goals in mind that you want to achieve, um, you know, contact us and, you know, we can talk to you about, you know, maybe uh, some of that one-on-one -on -one training stuff might, you know, whether that's right for you or not. You know, we do monthly live classes at our online school. Um, you get the playbacks for them, and it depends on what tier, right? Different tiers will open up, you know, access to these different things. Uh, but we have a large on-demand video library of great content um, that will help you build a good foundation skill of Kali. Um, our live stream classes, our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I'm also going to be opening up um, coaching for coaches. People that want to become, you know, teachers in this art, uh, teaching what we teach here at Kali Center. Uh, we're going to be opening up a whole nother coaches affiliate program through our online school as well. We're going to be opening that very, very soon. Um, so those that want to grow and share their knowledge with other people, uh, we want to be able to help you and do that. You know, like, like I said, you know, my intention for training and for the spread of the love of this art it's done amazing things for my life and my intention is i really want to you know give that back and, and help other people who want this to um, serve deeper you know meanings and purposes in their life you know, i want to go ahead and help the, you know serve those people as well so we have that coming a lot of really cool stuff got a brand new collie program that i'm working on developing right now filming some videos for hopefully i'll be releasing that soon um but got a little bit of traveling that i got to do coming up and some life changes that's happening in my life my life is going to get crazy over the next few months but um you know it's all it's all an adventure my friend it's all an adventure well anyways take care that's it just out here doing some reflecting let me know if you experienced any kind of deep intention that pulls you into your practice love to hear you know about your experiences and all that down below all right later keep training stay safe see you next time